Dr. Kutcher's office. The Vaseline Program, the only show in radio where the audience writes the script. And tonight's honors and prize money go to Hallie Truett Yenny of New York City for her delightful comedy, The Norton Knows. Jean Herschel is starred as Dr. Christian, with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. Folks, do you know somebody whose hair never seems to be able to lie down? Then do him a good turn. Tell him about Vaseline Hair Tonic. For just a few drops of Vaseline Hair Tonic every morning, keep a man's hair neat and well-groomed all day. Vaseline Hair Tonic cares for the scalp, too. Loosens dandruff, relieves that tight, itchy feeling, and other signs of dry scalp. Vaseline Hair Tonic is good for the scalp because it supplements natural oil. Good to use on the hair because it contains no alcohol or other drying ingredients. Yes, Vaseline Hair Tonic gives double care to scalp and hair. It's a double-purpose hair tonic. First choice with American men today. You've never used it? <laughs> High time you remedied that. Get Vaseline Hair Tonic tonight and try it tomorrow. Vaseline Hair Tonic is one of the many Vaseline brand products made by the Cheese Grow Manufacturing Company. Owners of the trademark, Vaseline. So now let's have a look at the Norton Nose. The opening scene takes place in a room in the River's End Hospital where young Pamela Norton lies swathed in bandages. Yesterday, she was hit by a truck driven by one Michael Clancy, and her nose, the famous Norton nose, has been pretty thoroughly bashed. Is it going to be very bad, Dr. Christian? Uh, my nose, I mean. You no, know, in fact, I might make a pretty good job of it myself, but I think I'm going to be able to swing something rather special for you. Such as a platinum nose set with stars off on it? <laughs> no, I... I'll put in a call for a young doctor who has just been released from hospital duty by the government. There's not a better plastic man in the whole country. If I can get Dr. Mason, your nose should be about as it was. Oh. Well, I must be getting along to my green sick patients now, people with gallbladders and such, not just a girl who has been hit by a truck. May I come in? If the nurse doesn't put you out, Judy, you may stay exactly 30 minutes. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Dr. Dr. Christian. Oh, you certainly sound natural, Pam, to be swathed and bandaged the way you are. Do you hurt much? Oh, some. Oh, then I'll go right now. No, Judy, wait. You've got to do something for me. What? Judy, don't let that Dr. Mason or any other doctor make my nose back the way it was. I hate it. Why, Pam, I didn't know that. Well, I do. And I'll let it stay just the way it is, a, a lot of broken mess before I'll have that horrible nose back again. Oh, wait a minute. I thought it was aristocratic. Oh, it was. It was aristocratic and it had character. Well, know, Dusty used to tell me that every day of my life. It inspired admiration and respect. But no work calls. A man would have seen think of dating me as of the Washington Monument. Oh, oh Judy, maybe you won't believe this. But I've never even been whistled at in all my life. Well, all we have to do is to tell this Dr. No. Mason when... No, he's never seen me. He doesn't have to know, and Dr. Christian says he's young. Oh, okay. He'll probably do a better job that way, but you have to have something to go by. How shall we tell him you look? Well, here, give me my handbag off the chair. Mm -hmm. Have a picture of it. Oh, thanks. Here it is. Isn't it an adorable nose? Oh, Pam, with a nose like that, you'd be perfect. Leave it to me. I'll stand over that doctor with an axe if need be. And if it works, I may make a date with Mike Clancy's truck myself. Goodbye now. <laughs> Dr. Crookin's office? Oh, yes, just a minute. It's that long distance you were trying to put through yesterday, Doctor. Thank you, Judy. Hello? Oh, Mason? Hello, Carl. Good to hear your voice. Been having a good rest? Good. I'm just about to ask you a favor. I want you to do an operation for me. <laughs> no, no, I... I don't want my face retreated, as you call it. It's a young girl I know. In fact, I brought her into the world about 22 years ago. Oh, no, she's uh, just had an accident. It's pretty much right to nose. Oh, sure, I could, but it 
Little Sono, give you a warm up before tackling that big New York practice? You will? That's great. Uh, you can stay at my place. Thank you, Carl. Goodbye. Well, Judy, that takes care of that. Now little Pamela can have her nose restored as it was. Oh, Dr. Christian, I talked with Pam this morning, and she says she simply will not have that awful nose put back on her face. He what? That's what she said. What's wrong with her nose? Well, I never thought of much about it myself before, but now that I look back on it, I know Pam never did have much fun. And I think it was because she looked too, uh, too intellectual. Oh, so it's a black day for a girl when she looks intellectual? I know it sounds crazy, Dr. Christian. And it's wonderful to be intellectual, but if you're a girl and you want to have dates and go to dances, it's, it's pure poison to look that way. Do you know what Pam told me? Oh, I should be very interested to know. She told me that she had never been whistled out in all her life. With all those soldiers camped right here at the edge of town, Pamela Norton was never whistled out. Am I hearing you right, Judy? I heard you say that you hated to pass the post office because there was always a gang of soldiers who whistled at you. I could swear I have seen you get furious. Well, because... of course I was furious. What girl wouldn't be it? Well, it's hard to explain, but you know how movie stars hate souvenir hunters. But if they didn't show up, the Clark Gables and the Jimmy Stewart would certainly be worried. Oh, so what the autograph hunter is to find Sinatra? Mm-hmm. I begin to see. So Pam describes all this lack of wolf calls to her nose. Well, Miss Augusta thinks very highly of the Norton nose. Oh, Miss Augusta. To her, that nose is a, an heirloom in the Norton family, second only to the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> well, I, I think that describes its exactly, Judy. It seems, according to her, that that nose, or one just like it, has been blown off and on by one signer of the Declaration of Independence, one ambassador to the Court of St. James, one judge of the Supreme Court, and... One governor of the state of Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> and Pamela is probably the first woman to inherit it since Miss Sarah Norton poured boiling maple syrup <laughs> on the red coat. Oh, well, here, here comes Miss Augusta herself. Oh. Never help you if she can read your mind. Good morning, Miss Augusta. How are you this morning? Uh, won't you sit down? No, young lady, I will not sit down. Not with my niece in the hospital with her nose literally ground a bit. I insist upon seeing Dr. Christian at once. You want to see me, Miss Norton? I certainly do. You asked me to bring a photograph of Pamela showing her profile, so heaven knows why you should want it when you've known Pamela since she was born. But you see, Miss Norton, I'm not going to operate. You are not going to operate? I uh, know, Miss Norton. Then who is Pay? One of the finest plastic surgeons in the whole country. And who is this man whom you've engaged without consulting me? Dr. Mason is a young doctor. You can uh... stop right there. I don't want him. What's the matter with you? You've forgotten all you learned in 30 years of practice? No, Miss Norton. If it were one of the football boys, I'm sure I would be able to do a good job of uh, plain surgery and bone setting on him. But for a girl, she should have a specialist in that type of work. <laughs> specialist. One doctor to pull your teeth, another doctor to give you a pill, another doctor to set your bones, and still another to deliver your baby. <laughs> Pamela's grandfather, Norton, used to amputate legs up to here, right on the kitchen table. I don't want any young squirt practicing on Pamela's nose. Dr. Mason will not be practicing. He spent two years in the hospitals of Europe and two more years over here. And all that time, he did nothing but rebuild faces that had uh, been destroyed. Your niece is most fortunate to have him. Well, I'm going to hold you personally responsible for Pamela's nose being restored exactly as it was. <sighs> did you find the pictures I asked for? No, I looked everywhere for one, but... Well, uh, I'm afraid in that case I can hardly guarantee... Oh, it. yes, you can. I did find this miniature of her great-uncle Abner Norton. It was made while he was serving as ambassador at the court of St. James. And he had the Norton nose. There, do you see the resemblance? Hmm. Mm. Well, um, that's strange. I've never noticed Pamela's nose particularly before. Hey, was it really like this, Miss Norton? Exactly. That nose has been handed down in the Norton family for 200 years. Always through the father's side. I see. Well, I wish I did. Of course, it's simple enough when you start to think of it. 
By some strange coincidence, none of the women who have inherited the Norton nose has ever chosen to wed. And you want that nose restored? I do. And you can tell that paragon of a whatever his name is to hang that miniature on a nail right over the operating table and not to take his eyes off the whole time he's fixing Pamela's nose. I'll tell him, Miss Norton. Mason's a great plastic surgeon. Oh, plastic finishing. Oh, Dr. Christian, you're not going to let him do it, are you? And if a ship will end up in Mason from a strong to Norton nose, who's to protect me from this Augusta? Well, Dr. Christian, you just leave the picture of Uncle Abner in your desk drawer. It's absolutely everything you have to go by, except this. Bless my soul, Judy. Where'd you get this picture? Pam gave it to me this morning. That nose would be the opening up of a whole new life for her. Full of wolf calls and whistles, no doubt. I hope so. She's awfully behind on them, you know. Hey, I wish I knew what you were planning. Oh, whatever it is, it'll be all right for me, but it might be unethical for you. Good morning, Miss Judy. May I give you a lift to the office? You certainly may. Oh, what a day. Yes, it's pretty bad. Will Dr. Christians be in this morning? No, not right away. He's on a case. I just wanted to see him about this Augusta Norton. She landed in on me last evening, reading about the little girl I'm to operate on. Why, she... Don't the... say it. <laughs> but she is all right. As we used to say when I was a kid, that she has some of her buttons missing. That's it. Well, what about her demand that Pamela's nose is to be reconstructed to look like the one in a miniature Dr. Christian is supposed to have shown me? Oh, dear. Well, then, she was serious when she brought that picture in and told us to give it to you. Why, we thought it was a joke. So you think the old girl's bombing? Well, she must be. I think I have the miniature here in my bag. I want you to look at it. Does that look like it belonged to a lovely girl? Yeah, my word. I shouldn't want to put that nose on her if I knew it belonged to her. I'll tell you, I'll make a thorough examination today and, and then get right to work. All right. Shall I tell Dr. Christian? Yes, if you don't mind. You know, Miss Judy, Pam's one of the nicest girls I've ever met. I think everyone in River's End loves Pam. I can believe it. You never hear her complain. You'd think she was happy over this whole thing. I noticed that, too. Well, you better take Uncle Abner along with you. But uh, if, if you want something to go by, this, this isn't a picture of Pam, of course, but the nose certainly could be hers. Uh -huh. I see. Very pretty. Yes. Well, tell Dr. Christian I'll have a full report for him this evening. I'll tell him. And thank you for the lift, Dr. Mason. Not at all. And uh, so, Dr. Christian, I think I can safely say that we can have her nose... Uh, about as it was. You say as it was? Uh, yes, and it'll be a relief to me. Why? Why? Have you ever met her aunt? Is it so important to have her aunt satisfied? If it weren't for Pamela herself, I should like giving her a nose like Cyrano, just to hear that old harridan throw a full set of hysterics. Of course, it's not as bad as though the girl's nose has really been like that awful miniature. No, of course not, but how do you know it wasn't? Your nurse, nurse told me. She told me about the old lady being slightly off the beam and, and gave me a picture which she intimated was like the little Norton girl's nose. Well, Carl, my advice is put that little picture Judy gave you right in front of you while you work. Right. And it'll be a pleasure. Well, Pam... Tomorrow's the great unveiling. Now, if your nose turned out to be somewhat different from what you'd expect it to be, uh, you wouldn't be upset. Oh, Dr. Mason, I want a nice nose. I don't want it to be like the one I've always had. I didn't want you to know this at first, but I hated my nose. Really? You mean you hated that lovely little nose like Myrna Lloyd? Oh, Dr. Mason, I, I hate telling you this, but I didn't have a nose like Myrna Lloyd's. I know it, Muggins. You know... 
What did you call me? Oh, I'm sorry. It slipped out. I call you Muggins. Are you angry? Muggins. I think it's wonderful. Muggins. That's why I must tell you about my nose. If you had known me before all this, you, you'd never in all the world have called me anything but Pamela. Because I looked like Pam. But I know exactly what you looked like before all this happened. Your nose was badly broken, but the structure of it was quite evident. Oh. Oh, then my nose will be exactly the way it was? No, not exactly. But how do you mean, not exactly? Either it has a hump or it hasn't. Well, uh, yes and no. Oh, you have done it. You've left that dreadful hump. Uh -uh. When you get your bandages off tomorrow, just run your finger along the ridge of your nose. Feel like it's a bargain run. No, it won't. It'll be just barely off straight. But why not straight? Well, if I had been, say, uh, 25 instead of a doddering 33, I should probably have made it just like the picture. What has your age got to do with my nose? A lot. I have more of a nose now than I would have at 25. You see, the nose you wanted was pretty but irresponsible. The one you had was stern and uncompromising. The one you're getting is, is gay but uh, responsible. And why did it have to be responsible? Because as soon as I get rid of these bandages so I can kiss you, uh, if you say yes, I'm going to ask you to be responsible for me. Out of the operating room, I'm a frightfully irresponsible guy. Oh, now you're making fun of me. No, Muggy. You haven't known me long, but we've seen each other every day. I think I know you pretty well. Of course, you, you may not feel the same about me. You, you may want to know me longer. Well, that's all right. I can wait. I just want to know that you know I'm waiting. To go? Well, I have to think it over a long time. You see, I... You are proposing to me. Oh, aren't you? Of course I am. But that nose. Would my children inherit that awful nose of the one you've just made me? The one you say is gay but responsible. Oh, that. Why worry about such things? They could select the noses they like. And their father would make them the sort of noses he liked. Which would indubitably be the sort of noses they should have. <laughs> oh, dear, I feel simply wonderful. If I do decide to get married, which, which I'm not at all sure of now, I shall give my bridal bouquet to Mike Clancy to tie on his radiator as a token of my gratitude and esteem. <laughs> I thought we'd all get more fun out of this coming out party if we held it at Dr. Christian's office. I failed to see what Dr. Christian had to do with all this. <laughs> well, Aunt Augusta, I'm afraid to think of what my nose would have looked like if Dr. Christian hadn't called in Dr. Mason. <laughs> you don't know what it's going to look like now. Oh, I'm sure, Miss Norton, that Pamela's nose would be... Not you know about it. And you wouldn't even think of saying it yourself. I must admit, Dr. Christian, my opinion of you has fallen off in no small degree. All right, here goes. First, I cut through this little... There, now. Now I'll unwind this and... Well, there you are. Hand to the mirror, Judy. Well, I shall see my life. I don't care if it keeps you working the rest of your life. You will have to rebuild the north nose. Oh, but, Anna, Gusty, you sound as though my nose were a, a national monument. Besides, I like it this way. Oh, Miss Norton, uh, since you feel that your niece's nose should have perpetual care and that I am somewhat responsible for its present condition, I've decided that the least I can do would be to marry her. Well, in that way... Now, you come with me this instant. I refuse to listen to any further insults. Oh, Carl isn't really being insulting in Augusta. We are going to be married, but not because of my nose. I hope. Doing this to keep you from suing, Pamela. Why, Miss Augusta... He's made Pamela's nose exactly like yours. Well, don't you see, Judy? It's a work of art. Well, uh, now that you mention it... Of course, it would have much more trouble, but I didn't mind it. It was so much better looking. Well, of course. Is it really like mine? <laughs> I never in all the world would have dreamed of having such a sacrilege perpetrated. Oh, but people can be beautiful, Miss Augusta, and uh, still have character. Come on, Muggins. Let's pick up the car and go for a drive. There's some unfinished business for us to talk over. Noah. God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. How do you mean, Miss Augusta? Well, just a little plan. My nose. 
to think that young man went to all that trouble. Well, I, I can't seem to be able to say what I mean, but I mean it. I must say that, Christian. It's all you said he does, and I'm most grateful to you for recommending him. Most grateful. Well, I'll be running along. Bye, Dr. Christian. Goodbye, Mr. Doctor. Dr. Christian, you humbug. Telling her Pam's new nose looks just like her. Oh, that was tough, Judy, just tough. I find I need a lot of it in the doctor business. comes down on another Dr. Christian prize play with our star, Jean Hershold, waiting to greet you. But first, a message from Judy Price. Friend, here's an interesting letter Dr. Christian and I received from a young mother. Recently, my three-year-old daughter fell against the hot, cold range. Her palms and fingertips of both hands were badly burned. I grabbed her up and dashed for my tube of Vaseline petroleum jelly. I covered both hands freely, then bandaged them. Her scream subsided, and she was soon ready to go to sleep. Next day, I applied fresh Vaseline petroleum jelly and bandaged it. By evening, she was playing as if nothing had happened, and the burns healed perfectly. Thanks to Vaseline petroleum jelly. Signed, Mrs. Edward J. Creamer, Portland, Oregon. Friends, wasn't it fortunate this young mother had Vaseline petroleum jelly on hand? It has so many uses in the home. There's probably nothing so important in the medicine cabinet that does so much, yet costs so little. Insist on Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. Only 15 cents for the popular size, 25 cents for the large economy jar. Thank you, Rosemary DeCamp. And now, here is Jean Herschel. Thank you very much. The author of tonight's prize play is Hallie Tewitt Yenny of New York City. She writes, It is very gratifying to me to be allowed to join Dr. Christian's new writers. For in spite of the fact that I am 68 years old, I am still a new writer. Mrs. Yenny comes from a writing family, has raised eight children, and now has 16 grandchildren, and she adds, now at least they can say, well, anyway, my grandmother wrote a script for Dr. Christian. Well, welcome to our ranks, Mrs. Yaney, and our congratulations to you. Next week, we plan to present one of our special $500 winners, 20-year promise by Evelyn Sipley Lampman of Portland, Oregon. We invite you all to join us again next Wednesday evening, same time and same station. Come down and say good night. Men have hair that stays good looking all day. Use just a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic every morning. For Vaseline hair tonic checks dry scalp. Tames hard to manage hair. Keeps it looking neat and well groomed. Tomorrow morning, try Vaseline hair tonic. Art Gilmore speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.